I have updated my playlist to help you find what you're looking for, anything from controversial topics that are relevant to Christian geeks, interviews with creators like author Brent Weeks and The Chosen's Dallas Jenkins, uh, growing in faith as a geek, tabletop gaming, comic books, video games, movies, and TV shows, or you can just get to know me a little bit better. There is a playlist uh, for you with more content being added to them all the time, so I hope you'll take a look and enjoy what you find. Thanks. Well, my editing skills are crap, but can the same thing be said about the series premiere for The Nevers? Stick around and find out. It's just a little bit flat on the top there. Hey, I'm Peter Franson from ChristianGeekCentral.com and Spirit Blade Productions. This is my uncut review of The Nevers series premiere on HBO Max. The synopsis on IMDb reads, An epic tale following a gang of Victorian women who find themselves with unusual abilities, relentless enemies, and a mission that might change the world. And the description for the pilot reads, Three years after an inexplicable event suddenly equips them with extraordinary abilities, Amalia True, Penance Adair, and Penance Adair, excuse me, work to protect their kind from widespread, deepening antipathy. Meanwhile, Police Inspector Frank Mundi Ben Chaplin, wow, that's a mouthful of a name, investigates a string of murders at the hands of a reportedly touched and highly dangerous serial killer named Malady. So yeah, touched is the terminology that is used to describe those who have been given these mysterious abilities as of this event that uh, no one seems to understand or even remember really uh, that happened three years ago. All right, so what is this animal? Uh, what is the story, script, pacing, and tone generally like? It's largely dialogue-driven, I think. It introduces a lot of characters in this first episode, giving kind of snapshots of their abilities and basic personality traits. Characters are not really given the time that I want to get a sense of more of, of who they are other than just the snapshots of their traits, both physical and, and personal. Uh, I would have preferred a more narrow and deep focus on fewer characters uh, and just give us, you know, take your time introducing these other characters with their abilities and stuff like that. Um, I didn't develop any attachment to any of the characters, though I can see the potential to care more if they were to lean into individual backstories really soon with individual character-focused eps. You know, like maybe uh, in the second episode they say, okay, now we're just going to zoom in on these one or two characters, and it'll be their episode. And then after that we'll zoom in on these other one or two characters, it'll be their episode, you know. Uh, so maybe that's what this show will be like? I have no idea. Easily half of the characters, I think, are played for or laughs at least part of the time um, due to humorous personality quirks of theirs. Now, I tend to like more serious stories with minimal comic relief because my cold, dead heart, for some reason, does not laugh at the things that make other people laugh. Uh, and this this tone, this this tendency toward playing for little chuckles, you know, felt liberally peppered beginning to end throughout the pilot, you know, with these, with these lightly comedic moments. It's set against this backdrop of mystery regarding the origins of all these touch people's powers, uh, and then in this particular episode, there's uh, kind of a Jack the Ripper tale almost, where, you know, you've got this inspector that's trying to track down a serial killer, and you've got these uh, other uh, people that are uh, also have powers, like the the killer that they're trying to track down is believed to have, uh, and so they're doing their part, trying their own, in, doing their own independent investigation, trying to uh, protect people bring together other people like them and give them a safe place to to live and to grow, you know, and all that kind of stuff. It's a very X-Men kind of vibe. Um, there are frequent power gimmicks throughout the episode, as well as multiple action scenes. But apart from wincing at a few blade slices, I wasn't engaged in the stakes uh, at all. Uh, let's see here. As far as the cast and performances go, well... Uh, I don't really have complaints about the actor's, like, ability. I think it's more of a stylistic thing going on. The performance style is just slightly exaggerated by all the performers. It reminds me of actors making choices just big enough to play to the back row of, say, a small theater. I mean, it's not, like, ridiculously huge and overdone, but there is a difference when you see live theater and you've got maybe, let's say, only 10 to 20 rows 
of seats in the house. Um, but that's still going deep enough back uh, that you've got to, uh, you, you've got to, well, I would say even like a theater of like maybe 10 rows, 5, 10, yeah, a 10 row theater. Uh, playing to the back, you're still going to have to just um, exaggerate or overstate your performance more compared to if you're doing like a, a, a TV drama or a film where you're going to be getting lots of close ups and stuff. And it's not like they didn't have the close ups or the capacity for doing close ups uh, in order to play to that style of acting. It just seemed to be a choice that they made uh, that, that everyone was uniformly kind of engaged in. So uh, that's why I'm pretty confident this is a choice, a directorial choice or a, or a showrunner, producer type choice of what they were going for in general here. Um, let's see here. There was a lot of uh, that was done for comedy in the performance choices and so that does make sense of the style a bit. I think that if you're going to overstate things if you're going for comedy it works a little better for me. It's, it's more acceptable to me for some reason. Even if I don't find the jokes funny it just kind of fits if they're going for jokes. But there were plenty of other times that they weren't going for jokes where I just was missing a more grounded style of performance. Uh, a standout example to me is the villain Malady who portrays insanity uh, in, a, in an almost cartoonish way that took me out of her scenes instead of really feeling unsettled by her and feeling, thre feeling the threat of, of her character. Uh, as far as stunts and visuals go, well, despite HBO Max, you know, also producing uh, the likes of raised by wolves uh which you know really raises the bar in my mind for you know and, and says okay this is premium television this is premium subscription television quality you know uh the nevers really doesn't feel like that or, or like several other shows that really kind of hit that that bar of like hey we're doing something freaking cinematic here that just happens to be split up into eight to ten episodes in a season you know um it no it feels like a tv show uh it feels like a network television show. The visual effects and the shooting style felt very serviceable and standard for, say, like the CW TV network, rather than that raised bar quality of truly premium television. Um, and rather than having much cinematic style, the camera, in the way it's used, largely sits still and, you know, switches back and forth somewhat statically, I think, between talking characters. Uh, now, I, I, in, the, in the show's defense, that may largely be due to the fact that, I, that this seems to be a dialogue-focused fo experience. Experience. Don't get me wrong, again, it has frequent action, it has frequent power gimmicks, but as far as like how information is given to you about who the characters are, about what's happening in the story, there's a lot of talking going on instead of like, say, silent shots where the camera's moving around and showing you things that are happening in a scene that don't involve people talking but are nevertheless telling the story, telling you about what's going on. It's much more giving you information, giving you character, giving you plot all through people talking um, unless there's action going on. It really seems to be driven by dialogue. And so uh, that that's not, you know, if, if you're going with that, if you're starting with that as, a, as like this is how we're going to tell the story from a script level, then yeah, you're not going to be doing a whole lot of the, the more visual cinematic uh, type of storytelling that I tend to prefer. Uh, all right, so themes. Is there anything of moral, philosophical, or spiritual significance going on in the themes of this thing that might stimulate some worthwhile thought or conversation? Uh, there definitely seems to be an intended parallel and maybe a subtle commentary, I don't know, about the mistreatment of women and minorities under the surface of this story, uh, about people gaining strange abilities. You know, we've seen this, this kind of premise tapped into to do those kinds of things uh, in stuff like X-Men, you know, and, uh, and even Harry Potter potter and stuff you know um predictably given the trends in fiction for i think decades now it seems to be religious people and and then also men in positions of authority that are the hateful ignorant cross section of humanity you know um though there is some small potential for some people of faith to be shown in a positive light one of the main protagonists the scientist slash inventor of the group who normally you know in, in a story like this and well and and that actually is the case i think think, well, mm, let me take that comment back. I'm not sure. I'd have to watch the episode again and really pay close attention. But, but a lot of times, the scientific characters are going to be the ones that are anti-religious or anti-God. They're going to be the naturalists, you know. And they did break that trend a little bit here because we've got this, uh, one of the main protagonists is all about technology and science, and she's able to create things that are far beyond what is technologically possible in this kind of like a, a early 1900s, late 1800s setting, you know. And uh, she uh, is humbly dismisses a compliment she's given when someone, after 
after understanding of what she's capable of says that she's a creator and she smiles and shakes her head very humbly saying there's only one creator you know so uh, she seems to have uh, some belief some rudimentary belief in, in God and so it'll be interesting to see if they do anything more with that uh, in the future of, of the the series but uh, anyway though there are you know and though it's done in subtle ways I suspect that these these social and possibly even religious themes will continue to be a part of the show but uh, yeah of course that just remains to be seen. All right, now I have no idea what your tastes are in TV shows, but if I were a time traveler, I'd go back in time and say, Peter, yeah, skip this one, man. Um, it's fine, but you want characters that immediately draw you in and make you care about them when you watch a pilot. There's just so many different entertainment options now that, like, you don't, you don't make time for fine in your schedule. You make time for, dang, that was good. Dang, that was compelling. Uh, and anything less than that, you just don't make time for. So, yeah, this is fine, but you weren't given enough to feel what you wanted to feel here to really pull you into this show. And the focus on dialogue over stylistic visual storytelling and the choice of performance style across the board just leaves you uninterested in seeing any more of this show. Uh, this one is rated TVMA for adult content, adult language, violence, and nudity. And more specifically, if you're curious, uh, there's brief rear male nudity and brief uh, female frontal nudity top of the body. Uh, all right, those are my thoughts. I would love to get yours in the comments below. Please like, share, subscribe, click that bell to stay connected. Anything you want to do legally, of course, to help spread this content around to other people who would benefit or, or be interested in it, uh, I would be very grateful for. I want to thank the Spirit Blade Insight for making this review possible. You can get info about the benefits of joining over at patreon.com slash spiritbladeproductions. And then, of course, I hope you'll join us soon over at christiangeekcentral.com as we continue to geek out and seek the truth. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. We've got a ton going on here at Spirit Blade Productions and Christian Geek Central, including our in-depth Bible study for geeks, movie, game, and other entertainment reviews or commentary, live streams, Christian geek news, original audio dramas, and tons more. And on top of all that, you can become a Spirit Blade insider with an influential voice and get access to exclusive content and rewards. It's your involvement as a patron that will keep all of this going and growing, so I want to thank you for your consideration in that. For more information, please check out our Patreon page through the link below at patreon.com slash spiritbladeproductions. Thanks for listening.